Some say this is the best breakfast burrito-based LinkedIn live show on the planet. Others say it's okay. Burritonians around the world, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, it's time to come together. It's Thursday. It's 7.45 a.m. This is the Big Live Breakfast Burrito! Morning, Vanessa. Morning. Vanessa, I have to say, it... <laughs> you excel. Do it again. Do the pose again. <laughs> she had to I'll sit screenshot that. all through the night doing that. that all through the problem. night. I all through the night. Absolutely. Be so you were just watching the telly. Oh, Clarkson's fine. Um, you've put a bit of effort in. I put the most effort in. <laughs> Creativity at its finest, I think you're fine. Out, outstanding. Are you are you staying with the test card all the way through the show? Yeah, why not? I think <laughs> um, from, um, I didn't have time to like quickly mock up a paper mache clown, but yeah, well, I think we'll just rock this this morning. I think, I think you did more modern. The, the Muppet Show wasn't around when the, test, the original test card was invented, so you modernised it. Yes. Modernised it, oh, yeah. Okay. Brought it into brought it into 2022. Let's okay. say hello to some some lovely people. Debbie Radford was first in. Hi. Hi, Debs. Henry, Henry Foxworthy. I was Hi, so Henry. hoping that Hen Henry spoke like that, but he doesn't, does he? Um, <laughs> Graham, Graham's here. Stephen Summers here. Let's let's uh, say some Stephen Sumner. Um, Martin Belch is here. Hello, Martin. Good to Good see you. Good morning, Martin. Good to see you. We've got uh, who else have we got? Steve Gaston. Um, I will be in touch, Steve. I promise. It's my fault that I haven't. Kenny Julie's here. Good morning, Kenny. Uh, Chris Partridge. We've got Jay Smith. Uh, Ross Jolly's here. Boratonian OG Boratonians, a cup owning Paul Burgess sipping his coffee from his mug in anticipation. Uh, uh, oh, look at this! Look at this! Oh, news in for Susan. Donde está la salsa? I like it. Ooh. Thank you very much, Andrew. Getting all getting all continental yeah, on us. Look at these lovely people. Uh, hi, Nicola. Nicola, have we seen you on the show before? Have we seen Nicola on the show before? I think we have. I think we have. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Sarah Doyle, uh, Mrs. Doyle, yeah. as, you, as you know her. Uh, two sugars, uh, Mrs. Doyle. Two sugars, absolutely. <laughs> uh, the lovely Richard's here, and everyone's piling in. It's so nice. So nice Aww. to see you all. So, um, uh, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, the Big Live Burrito with me, Eric Doyle, and... Me, Vanessa Gartel. And... Me, Matt Pivas, back again. Oh, thank goodness. Yes. Back again. Yes, nice. You're staying this week, Matt. Or you yeah, I'm staying. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm shoot off through. Yeah. You put definitely, definitely thing. staying. Definitely, yeah, definitely staying. staying. So, so this is your big live breakfast burrito. This is your Thursday morning mood setter. Um, thanks for joining us. If you're an old timer, if you've been with us for a wee while, welcome back and thank you for the support. And we do question what's going on in your head if you come back for this structured nonsense, as it's been yes, called yes. before. Yes. Mush is the other word, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're new to the show and there's and love, some lovely new people uh, just coming in this morning, good morning to you. The only price of admission is that you say hello. We ask that everybody that watches says hello, that's it. Just say hello. Tell us how you're doing. Tell us where you are. The furthest away we've been is Australia, but we've been in Dubai. Tim Wiggum takes us everywhere. Denmark. Tiba is usually here from Denmark. Where yeah. else have we been? Norway. Abu we've been Dhabi. In Abu Dhabi. Um, we've been all, all over. We, we love. We to hit the US as well, didn't we? And and a fishing boat in Alaska. Oh yes, we did. We did, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, we've even been to Peterhead. Yeah. <laughs> we've been to Peterhead. We've been there okay. and Great Yarmouth. And great Yarmouth. Um, so, so thank you so much. What's on this week? Um, so this is the TV show special, right? As you can see by these wonderful, <laughs> wonderful people before you, this is the TV show special. So all the music is about TV. And I have to say that the Burritonians have excelled themselves, yeah. not only TV themes, but things related to TV. You know, we've got some fairly heavy hitters on here with the music. You've got your Slessers, your Kilos, your Fifes, yeah. um, your, your, your Barry Youngs, your, who else is good on the music? Stuart White, 
um, have just excelled, and everybody else who suggested a song. So, um, so do you want a little taster? Yeah, go on. Yes, go on. Where, where, we're, where we're going? Where we're going this week? Where we're going this week? It's a family business. All right. All right, there shall be. All right, there shall be. I want to know how their house stayed up because they cut it all the way through that terrace, didn't they? They did. They did. I'm getting dressed for the next one. I'm getting dressed for the next one because I need to. I need to get on mode. Matthew, have you got your? Have you got your kit? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've got the moment. I've got the feeling I know where this is going. You couldn't do a job as Superman, could you? you <laughs> What's this? Harmony hairspray. So you've just got safety glasses on and you put your collar up. Well, yeah, yeah, well, you, I've, I've got the memo. Put, gla- put glasses on. I thought Miami is a dangerous place. Safety glasses. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Jeans are rolling sleeves, right? Too hot. I don't know why they wear jackets in Miami. It's too hot. Got the salty spray in my face. Give Mr. Doyle a bucket of water. Absolutely. Well, that's that. Or we, or we could go proper UK old school. Remember this. Do you remember? I mean, that was just. That sound. I wasn't allowed to watch Green Shield. Just say my, no, Roland. Just say no. My nan was always saying to my mum, I can't believe you let them watch it. It's just yeah. bad thing. It, <laughs> it, 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 it did touch on all the all the serious topics of the day, didn't it? It really did. Yeah. It really did. Right, so we're gonna we're gonna do that, but yeah, as I said, the Boritonians are pretty clever people. Pretty yeah, clever. Fair. And uh, and this one here was suggested, and I love this because this is quite Think about it. See what you've done there. I had this on repeat yesterday, and it was just what an epic. I mean, I've always loved it, but what? See when you. It is. It is. So it's good. So good. Just so many levels and layers. Just say no. Just say no. <laughs> had all of my school books covered in. All the stuff and snap it when I'll harm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Right, so that's our music today. We'll be touching back in with all our, our top TV theme favourites and TV related tracks. We've got some absolute crackers. Um, we've got prize giveaways. Our friends from OGV Tap Room are letting us give away more drinks this week, which is great. Um, we've got uh, our main prize of the day £100 in Amazon vouchers. Done. Done. Uh, from the really thirty odd shows in, yeah, absolutely, and it's still, I still have to think about it. It's still yeah. a mental block. Um, Amazon vouchers from Alistair Dickinson and the lovely team at Maps and Maximize. Maps and Maximize. My Max Andrew. Maps and Maximize. Maximize. Um, we're contractually obliged to say it ten times, so I've managed to get it in. Maximize. Yeah. Maximize. Um, what else in the show? We've got a matter of fact is coming back with a lovely Simon Wells. We've got Doyle's doubles, which hey, is I'm before before about. we go on. Sorry to interrupt. Didn't Simon do a great job anchoring last week? He really I, did. I, I, nearly, I, I nearly when I watched it on repeat. I nearly I nearly sort of spat my coffee out when he when you sort of uh, brought him on and he was. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he was there and ready, and he was he very was. very good. Yeah, so uh, so be be careful, Pybus. Your jackets in the shed. Yeah, yeah. Really um, <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a. Uh, hel- we're helping a grad this week. We are. We are. Yeah. We're going to meet the lovely Daniel at some point uh, during the show, uh, and I'm really thrilled about this because so, I'm going to see if we can do some magic. So you didn't scare him off then? On the, no, on, absolutely. On the, on the, on the not. Show, you said it was grab a grad. Yeah, grab a grad. Yeah, yeah. I just did that. that was that was ridiculous. Uh, if you'd like to join the show, um, type in "get me on." And we will get you on the show. If you're sitting out there thinking, I'd like to go on there and share some news about something that I'm doing or maybe some charity stuff or or just want to go on and have a chat. Uh, if you want to join the show, just type, get me on. I'll send you a link. We get you on and we'll give you a couple of minutes to do what you want to do. So that's happening today. Not many requests for Cowson's Comedy Club to return. No? <laughs> oh, best oh, poor Mark. 
Hopeless, Mark. He did very, very well. I'm joking. It was brilliant. And we will see more of Kewison in the future for uh, Kewison's Comedy Club. Max Rance is back. What are you ranting about? Soap operas. Fair enough. We're going to yeah. do Thirsty Thursdays. Looking forward to that, Vanessa, especially when you're in your test card garb. That's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Uh, Susan's joining us later for a round two. It, but uh, what show? We better we better crack on. So, I so thought... if anybody tunes in by mistake at uh, uh, Thirsty Thursdays, they're going to see the test card like, girl, who's a 12-year-old girl, quaffing wine. On the sauce. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. I've been here 50 years, it's driving me 50 drink. years, yeah, I'm sick, I'm sick of this. So I thought, uh, he wasn't with us last week, and I thought what a fitting tune to bring him on to would be this one, because he, he just exudes all that class and style. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Poetry Corner with the Bard of Boratonia, William Shorten. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Love you, Will. Fantastic, fantastic dress up today, Vanessa. Well done. Hats off to you. Oh, thank you. Made a bit more of an effort than Eric did. But, um... but I, I thought Eric was doing the Monty Python lumberjack sketch. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm doing it throughout the show. I have to say, taking that photograph of the Sky Card was, was hard. <laughs> Absolutely. What have you got for us today, Will? Um, I, I've I've been inspired. Well, I've also got to thank my my stand-in from last week, Richard, who did a who did a great job. Um, very good, yeah. Very good, yeah. So, yeah, definitely the shuggy nail, the jacket's hanging there. Uh, so he's inspired me. So so I've written something for today, uh, which is yeah I have yeah, which is ode, ode to television. So trying to keep in theme. Oh, I'm thrilled! Fantastic. Go on, Will. From cathode ray tube encased in baker light, capturing flickering images in black and white of stately coronations and astronauts in space and men winning under four minute mile race. As the color era did boon, you brought us pictures of men on the moon, turned operas into soap, providing mechanisms for us to cope. You crowned queens both royal and in drag aplenty, swore in presidents ten a penny, made saints of sinners, transformed celebrity from non-entity. And as technology moved apace, aerials, masts and dishes beamed from space, live pictures from foreign lands to tiny screens nestled in our hands. At your best, you enable us to feel as one, to celebrate great feats which are done, meeting the motto which must pertain, educate, inform and entertain. That is outstanding. That's not bad, eh? Well done, Will. Is this this, this a new thing, or has this been going on for a little while, secretly? Uh, No, there's been a few scribblings around, but, yeah, just, uh, you know, you're caught in the moment this week. So I think, as Richard said, you know, once you get a line to start off with, and then, yeah, things just fell into place. So, uh, yeah, I knew I had to raise my game. Well done. You really I think that was outstanding. And you've set a new bar for yourself now. You may have made a rod for your back, old chap. Yeah, it's not going to happen every time. But, you know. <laughs> Just getting that in there. Well done. It's, it's, it's not quite the hole in one, but it's, it's, it's like playing golf where you hit that one shot in a round and uh, you, you know that's the level you've got to try to, to reach then. Well, we loved it, and thank you, for, thank you for doing it. Um, excellent work, excellent work indeed. Um, thank you so much, Will. We will see you shortly. That's no problem. Thanks, guys. Love All the best. Wasn't that lovely? Yeah, that was great. Good. Really good. I yeah, it was really good. We listen to that we'll again. It's about it's... time he upped his game, really, instead of just reading other people's work. Yeah. Plagiarism. Much love coming in for Will. William, <laughs> thumbs see. up. He's, he's busy, isn't he, on all his secret assignments? So he doesn't secret always assignments, get yeah. Right secret time. assignments, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Oh, we'll come back to you later. I'm just letting my music play on there. Um, oh. uh, game, game changed. Will Shorten says Foxworthy. Mm. Brilliant. Will says the main sponsor. The gaffer's in. Everyone to attention. The main sponsor's in the house. Um, uh, so that that was lovely. Yeah, thank you for that. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant, that brilliant. <laughs> Loved it. What's next? We're going to give away some uh, some of. Uh, some of Something Kenny Dooley and Dan Hyland's hard end profits. Will we do that? Yeah. Yes. Let's They'd do be that. disappointed if yeah. we didn't. They did. They would. Yeah. So yeah. here's the form. Um, if you type in OGV tap room right now, morning, Mark. <laughs> just listening with one ear today. Just one. <laughs> just one headphone in, or just just like that. Just like that. Um, the um, 
yeah, so OGV Taproom, Oscar Golf Victor, type that in just now. All we need for you in, or- in order to win a drinks voucher for four drinks at the uh, at the OGV Taproom. OGV Taproom, name of the artist, name of the song, and this one is a no-brainer. Are you ready? Are what you are ready? Doing? What are we doing? Third? Fourth? Let's go for the, the third. The third. The third correct answer wins it. Huge TV show, right? OGV Taproom, artist song, voucher the shoes. If you're... <laughs> <laughs> well done, man. There's a clue. Number one. Oh, never gave us the name of the song, though. Yeah. Oh, number one, it's Scott. Scott's first. Scott's first. Two, three, it's three it's, Derek it's, Roy. It's three, Derek Roy. Let's just check that out. The Rembrandt's Fred. Oh, we don't have the, don't have the no, name of the song. We don't, unfortunately. Well, I've got so, a feeling it's... Um, oh, I don't know, Louise unfortunately. was second. Mark Cowison is third. Yes? Yeah. Mark Cowison. There you go. OG, he's been trying for months. Well done, months. Mark. He's OGV tap room. Let's scrutinise it and make sure he's got everything correct. Yeah. And we'll yeah. snatch it out so, of his hands if he's one iota wrong. He missed the apostrophe of Al. Mm, yeah, that's you know we're very big on we're very big on yeah. syntax and grammar here, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well done, Mark Cowison. Well done, um, Mark. You'll be able to go along there and spend your lovely OGV drinks voucher in the tap room outstanding thank you for everyone who tried to enter and no doubt we'll get notes of controversy where people have taken screenshots and said i won i won it that uh, i feel cheated uh, i, I in, feel, I I feel in, absolutely I in bognery just but i feel cheated that i can't go to <laughs> aberdeen and get four beers exactly exactly i could come from buenos aires yes <laughs> i could head along i could head along this one this one is a little beauty it's it's for jay smith because he suggested it What you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? Absolutely. A bit of this, perhaps? Indeed. That was uh, Officer's Mess uh, in the RAF. Every Sunday night, everybody used to pile back to, to watch it. It was absolutely fun. That, so, oh, you rem- oh, right, okay, you remember this? Oh, no, oh, yeah. I've got yeah. one here, which is an absolute an absolute crack, and it sent a shiver down my spine if I could only find it. If I could only find it. Talk amongst yourselves, will you, for a little second? <laughs> yeah, That's a weak thing. Right? Yeah, That's a yeah. weak thing. Yeah, it's not, not too bad. I'd stick a cross in the top left-hand corner if I were you. Do you think? Yeah. Because I've been pondering on how yeah. best to yeah, this is annoying me so much because I can't I can't flip and find it. But I'll come back to it. I'll come it's back. Be worth it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm just going to do this because if we're doing TV shows, we can't not mention it. This gives me a little thrill. This was such a big part of my life. What, what is it? <laughs> what? What is it? Come on, tell them. Tell the Coratonians, tell these Philistines. <laughs> what is this? This is epic TV. Yes, um, exactly. Nothing will ever come close to the gods. I, I think I've seen half an episode. <clears throat> Don't go north the wall. Don't go north the wall. Adult channel. <laughs> <laughs> God, nothing will come cr- close. Uh... <laughs> Good claps as far. That is an epic program. Oh, yeah, this is. I've watched it three oh, times. Oh, 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 oh! I'm actually a David's terrible TV show. I don't even oh, know what it is. Yeah. Game of Thrones. I've never well, watched we've it. We've got we've got a non legot and a. Yeah, absolutely. Um, never watched wait. it. Yeah. Never watched it ever. No. Nope. Right. It was, okay. I thought it was the intro to Black Beauty. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're going to crack on. It's time. Uh, you're always, you've always been towards the sort of uh, back end of the show, but we thought we'd put you right up top. So it is time. For those of you who are new to the show, Vanessa is our social sommelier, knows everything wine related. Um, is that right? Questioning that? Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch, but yeah. Bit of a stretch? A little bit about wine. <laughs> Chris Wallace, get me on. No problem. We will get you wow. on, sir. Absolutely. Me, Link is sent. My goodness, what is what has he got to tell us? What has he got to tell us? What is going on? Um, right, okay, so over to you. Vanessa, what do you have for us today? Thanks. So all TV shows we can get like the ones that are enjoyed by millions and millions of people, hugely popular TV shows. Um, and they're award winning. Uh -huh, thank you, Henry. So I'm going to do a wine, which is hugely popular, massive crowd pleaser, enjoyed by millions, has won loads and loads of awards. Um, we are doing... Yes, she's doing MD 2020. <laughs> no. 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 no every, sorry. Week, sorry. every week we pray for it. <laughs> every week. <laughs> um, we're actually doing the UK's um, favourite, most favourite white wine, which is unsurprisingly a Sauvignon Blanc. And when we look at um, Sauvignon Blanc, um, I wanted to go to a country in the world which has sort of become known as the Sauvignon Blanc capital of the world. So, of course, we're doing New Zealand. Um, mm. And New Zealand, Sauvignon Blanc, some of the stats behind it are absolutely staggering. 87% of all New Zealand's wine exports are Sauvignon Blanc. So for a small country, it's absolutely bonkers. And when we look at Sauvignon Blanc from um, New Zealand, the main growing area, which counts for like 90% of all Sauvignon um, Blanc production in New Zealand, is Marlborough in the South right. Island. So yeah. heaps of intense aromas. You will know that you're dealing with a Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc because you'll smell passion fruit and you'll smell gooseberry. If you ever smell those two, then you're probably dealing with a, a, a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough. We are doing the A team. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, the eight. Yeah. Really the well, eight. We are doing oh, the team of Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc, a total crowd pleaser, has won hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of awards. The winemaker Brett Maris, his dad was one of the first people to plant Sauvignon Blanc in um, New Zealand. So we're doing this. Wow. You may have seen my little post about how precarious this whole setup is. We've seen it. And there's. This is really ultra precarious this morning, so... Be careful. We are doing this. We are doing Ooh. Ooh. the Ned, of course, from Wahope Valley um, Sauvignon Blanc from um, Marlborough, New Zealand, 2021. This is quintessential um, Kiwi Sauvignon Blanc in the glass. It's... I've not had um, the Ned for probably about five, six years. And I had a couple of glasses last night and I forgot just how amazing this wine is. It deserves all the, all the you know, the fame and the love for it. It's absolutely lovely. Beautifully bright, really fresh. There's sort of like lime, lemon going on, on the nose. This is classic, classic Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. Grapefruit, lime, lemon, heaps of passion fruit. There's really, really, really exotic vibe. And it's really, really expressive notes. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the Ned quite. And, um, Link, the... Link man's all over it. Oh, bless you, Scott. Thank you. All right. It's amazing. Non-executive director in the boardroom in Glasgow, an entirely different thing. <laughs> as, Ian, as Ian has pointed out, the only Ned that I don't mind. <laughs> very good really ripe really zesty nice acidity lovely lovely pa um, passion fruit this is an absolute classic they consistently every single year make amazing Sauvignon Blancs um, it's Majestic Wines best selling wine it's available for Majestic Wine Asda Tesco and Waitrose shop around on your prices um, in Majestic, it's about um, £10. In Asda, I think I've seen it for about £7.50. So they vary in they vary in price. It's absolutely lovely. And what I really like about this is although it's really ex exotic and loads and loads of like, passion fruit and tropical stuff on the nose, it doesn't um, overpunch on the palate. So if you want to get involved with this 
it's that yeah it's I want to get involved um proudly. Jim's a, Jim's asking does Vanessa always sample her wine she must be permanently smashed <laughs> Vanessa has no recollection of ever being on these shows <laughs> ever <laughs> What did I do on Thursday morning? But I don't know. Like, what, what, I don't know. Yeah, dressed up, dressed up as the te- dressed up as the test card. <laughs> and as my other half said to me this morning, about 40, 40 years too old to be wearing the Alice band, darling. <laughs> <gasps> How dare you! It's only because it's his birthday he gets away Shocking. with it. Matthew, exactly. what are you going to say? Yeah, my question: Does it? Would it go well? Seafood chowder is on the menu tomorrow night. Beautiful Absolutely. seafood chowder that Mrs. P makes, and definitely. Yes. Definitely. Veggie food, Thai fish cakes, seafood. That would be perfect match with it. It's a really good one. Rumour has it in the Lawson household, they actually they actually their their week week's worth of dining is is built around what you review that week and your food recommendations. So uh, very, wow. very good. Everybody's yeah. gonna give it a go. We love that one. That's a cracker. Thank yes. you so much. Proper is that it? Yeah. For this week? Yeah, all done. Brilliant, Thank brilliant. You. Love love that. Love that. That was uh, outstanding. This is for all the oldies out there. This was Sunday night for me after bath time when I was a little kid. I remember this. Yes! But, everyone, please. Now, I'm not having any of this. What is that Game of Thrones nonsense? Everybody must know this sound. Nick Rayburn, hold on to your desk. That's something from Robin Hood. If you don't know this, you've missed out in life. Recently. Come on. Sounds like my mum and dad's pan pipe album that they used to have. Simon Wells, yes, this is the way. I haven't got a clue. Where's the kid? It's, it's the it's the man it's it's the Mandalorian. It, it no. sounds it sounds like uh, the twelve year old recorder class. <laughs> How dare you, Mando? And people people out there, no, not not the Walking Dead. It. I've just I've just started the Walking Dead. I've got a bit of a, a thing about horror. Not really my thing, right? So yeah, the other night, I, the other night, I thought I'll give Walking Dead a go. Got halfway through the first episode and felt sick and turned it off. But I pushed through, and now I'm getting kind of into it. Did you hide behind the sofa at Doctor Who? When you I just don't like. I don't like all the gore. I just it, it made me feel gaggy. But I'm so I'm fast forwarding through some of the gore. There was a person being eaten last night, and I thought I don't need to watch that. But I am enjoying <laughs> the Walking Dead. Good old show. Bloody well. What well would you recommend without Vanessa? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, um, before we go on, um, yeah. I've got a request. We're always yeah, thinking about it. I have got a request for future shows. Um, I had an idea um, for future shows. We're not going to we're not going to push this next week or the week after, just whenever. Could you, lovely Boritonians out there, and we know there's people of a certain age out there, um, let us know by photograph, either sending it to myself, Matt, or Vanessa, or sticking it in the group chat, the best thing that you still have from the nineties. And we'll do a little feature of the best photograph or a little video of you with yeah. your thing from the 90s, whatever it might be. It might be a car, it might be a jacket, it might be a book, it might be something. It might be those uh, that, that that T-shirt you had. It might be your, your I don't know, was Choose Life the 80s? That was the 80s, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the wab stuff and all that. But whatever yeah. your best thing is from the 80s, uh, from the 90s. All sorts of stuff. From the 90s, right? So your best yeah. thing from the 90s. Um, take a photograph, send it in, and we'll make a little collage, and we'll do a little feature. Also, separate, who's got the best collection? Now, it doesn't have to be a great collection. It could be that you've got, you know, two or two or three things. Right? My my teeth, my teeth, my favourite thing from the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, Martin says, "My belt." Very my good belt. too. Okay. Absolutely. So so separate collections and best thing from the 90s for future episode who's got the best collection like i realized the other day and my wife backs it up that it is a collection i seem to have i've got a bit of a fascination with nordic socks i have yes. i have a lot of pairs of nordic socks i only wear nordic socks I've, and I've, i notice you walk outside in them without shoes on i walk outside of them with no shoes on i've always yeah. got nordic socks on no matter what time of the year it is and i've Do you got wear them with, um, flip-flops uh, no, actually, I do in the house, and I nearly went out the other night with them on. Anyway, so 
Best thing from the 90s and uh, your best collections. Photographs to us, videos to us, please. And we'll make a little uh, a little collab. Like um, this one was suggested. By Yian Compton, now that we know how to say his name. Hey, we're at the we're at the point of the show where um we're gonna do something wonderful. Who's got the best yes. collection of something? Best oh. collection of something. Um we're at the uh, records, this what, Adam. Records, records, guitars, whatever it might be, absolutely. Um right, fantastic yeah, part of the show. Yeah. This is the part where we we call upon the power of Buratonia, the strength of Buratonia to help a graduate. All right? Yeah. Um Whenever we can, we bring on a graduate. We give them two or three minutes to do tell us what they've been up to and what they're doing. They're t- they tell us what they'd like us to do for them. And we go away as the power of Boratonia and we try and get this person a conversation or whatever it is that they're looking for. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet Daniel. Hello, Daniel. You all right? Good yeah, morning. we're fine. Good morning to you. So it's Daniel Slimmings, from, uh, originally from Hartlepool, but now uh, studying in Aberdeen, right? Yeah. So take it away, sir. The floor is yours. Let us know what you've been up to and let us know how we can help you here. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so yeah, I'm Daniel. I've been studying mechanical engineering with management for the past five years, uh, just finishing up now on my master's and hopefully going to get a first class in that. So I'm very excited about that. Wow, um, congratulations. Thanks. Um, as part of what I've been doing for the past five years, um, I've had a lot of opportunities. So I've worked with local firms on like design projects and stuff. Um, I did a dissertation with BP uh, looking at the effect of corrosion on subsea hook clamp assemblies, which was very interesting. And there was lots of um, research and CAD involved there. Um, as far as like what I'm looking for to go into the future with, I'm very interested in either doing like something related to design or project management, possibly, particularly in the energy sector. But also I'm very interested in automotive as well. Uh, as far as where I'd like to work, I think I'm very flexible. I'd love to have a career eventually that takes me all across the world. But I'm also like after being in Scotland for five years, I'm very fond of it. So I'd like to stay up here if I could. So cool, cool. You're saying all the right things right here. You're saying all the right things. <laughs> Thousands of boxes, Daniel. Now, mechanical right. engineering and management, but it's interesting that you're also into design because you originally thought maybe it was going to be something in art, right? Yeah, I was, um, because I never grew up at the age of eight wanting to be a project manager, I I don't think. uh, (laughs) One day. (laughs) I was like, I wanted to do art since I was about, like, well, ever since I can remember, to be honest. But as I got older, I started learning I was better at maths as well. And I was sort of trying to find a way to do both of those things at the same time. And that's where engineering sort of managed to fill that gap, because... With engineering, you can do a lot of creative stuff and like you can have a real impact on things and make things that are very interesting, exciting and like evocative. But at the same time, you're also applying logic and being scrupulous about stuff. And it's just very exciting to be in an industry that's both creative and creating most of the world that's around us. So I really like that. As Simon Wells has put it beautifully, if only we knew some people that might be interested in someone who's done a dissertation on corrosion in subsea hub club assemblies, mm. like some of the people that are listening today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just saying, just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, so, what keeps you sane when you're not uh, when you're not um, studying hard? What's what? What? How do you relax? Uh, well, typically, I'll like I'll go climbing a lot. I go like once or twice a week. I do indoor and outdoor stuff. Um, I also like doing photography and filming stuff. Uh, like, so me and a couple of friends sometimes during summer will make like mini documentaries and stuff like that. And I also I like to try and keep myself busy, even if it's like sort of semi academic related. So I started uh, my university's mechanical engineering society, and I've been doing that for the past two years. So that's been very interesting to talk to people from different parts of industry and talk to um, people like iMechi and stuff like that. So yeah, that's about it. Just a little special note from Ross at Aberdeen Young Professionals. Um, yeah. Aberdeen Young Professionals first in-person networking event at the OGV hat, uh, tap room from seven pm. Meet new contacts, and he said at the end of it, um, "Come along, Daniel." OGV yeah. tap room tonight. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Kenny yeah. Dooley just texted me and okay. said that if Daniel comes along, he can have his first pint for free. Did he? That's decent. Yes. Yes. Yes? Question mark. <laughs> He didn't say that to me when I was up in Aberdeen last week. <laughs> That's so nice of you, Kenny. That's so nice of you. Look out for him. He said he's going to look. What's that? You're going to look out for him? Look out for him. He's going to look out for you. 
It's going to look out for you. Um, <laughs> result already. Um, we've got Ian Gove uh, from Acker saying connect. There um, go. So that's it. You've met Mike. You've met uh, Daniel now. You know what he's all about. Mechanical engineering and management. Um, <laughs> there you go, Look, There you go. Kenny's, Kenny's come in and said, of course, man. There you go. I would, I would, I would test that absolutely. Um, what are you looking I, I, for? You what would, have what would to be... walk in there. Sorry, you have to walk into the LGV tap room and go. Do you know who I am? <laughs> Do you know who? <laughs> you get free point. What would be What would be ideal out of this? What would you like? I think just to have get like start meeting some new people, make some connections, and have some conversations, and like you were saying, like get to meet some of the Baritonians and hopefully just see where things go from there. Yeah, brilliant. Well said. Hey, hey, listen, yeah. we're going to try and put the power of our, yeah. our combined elbows together to try and help you. It was a pleasure to meet you, and uh, we will see you soon, my friend. And let us know how you get on, and definitely head along to the tap room tonight. They're waiting for you. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Thanks for having me. All on. right, we shall well see done, you soon, my friend. Ta-ta. Bye-bye for now. Well done. That was that a great was pitch. That was Daniel. Uh, just have a quick look at this before you before you go. That's his profile, Daniel Slimmons. Um, you'll see he's got the lovely mountain and trees in the background there because he likes a bit of uh, hill walking and climbing. And the next one uh, is of him standing with his dissertation on corrosion and subsea hub clamps ready. He was he was uh, mentored by BP, uh, uh, P Peter Dunning there, and there he is standing, proud as punch, ready to submit his dissertation, heading towards his first class degree. Um, let's see what we can do to help help can, a young grad, right? We Love can you. definitely help Daniel, surely, with all the, yeah. all the contacts and connections that we've all got, definitely. Absolutely, we can. Uh, no, no problem. Anyone remember this one? This could be a case for Melder and Skelly. <laughs> Couldn't it? Yeah. Melder and Skelly. <laughs> Brett Townsley's just appeared, just to let you know, the little guy is up there. I don't know if you can see him. He's just above my finger. The little guy is there. Aussie, as he's called. The little OSI the little OSI stress reliever, which we try and get on as many shows as possible. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, we've had so much fun in this show. It's probably about time we, we put a downer on the proceedings, right? Yeah. If we, oh, it's on. The rant cap is on. Oh, rant. It's, it's a tribute. It's not a rant cap. It's a tribute to... Uh, ah, Julius. To to, to, to fall, fallen heroes of soap operas. This is the, the, the tribute to Benny from Crossroads. Right. Okay. Um, see where you're going with that. Yeah, see where we're going. See what I did there. Yeah. Right. Shall I carry on? Yes, you, you should. Well, you always do. So, soap operas. Firstly, I'm not sure what the soap reference is. And secondly, there's no singing. So why do they call them soap operas? Misrepresentation. Okay. These must be the most trumped up waste of time on a box. There's always a drama, always overacted, and frankly, they go on and on and on, apart from Crossroads. So all soaps tell me that I know I don't want to go anywhere near these places. They significantly re reduce my life expectancy by either accident, merda, Vanessa, or border. Merda. <laughs> well, let's Never take a city. <laughs> So enders. Cool, blimey, would you Adam and Evie? Everyone's miserable. Everyone's had an affair with everyone. They're probably all related. And you've at some point worked in the Vic and some, some everyone shouted, get out of my pub. And there's only one pub, which is okay because everyone drinks tea. A nice cup of tea. Mrs. Doyle will be in her element. Shall I go on? Yeah, Coronation Street. Yeah. Coronation Street. If you thought Enders was depressing, then hop up to the north, left a bit, and you hit Coronation Street. It's a shame the Luftwaffe didn't miss it. Um, or the, yeah. So I think it was going well till then. Yeah, it was going well till then. I got my merge waddled. Um, what a place of misery that it's been for the last sixty years. For goodness sake, it's on more than once a week as well. Talk about a cash cow misery. It's a drama, but there's never one. It's as mundane as chips and gravy. It's so dull that if you were handcuffed to the chair and a remote was out of reach, you'd chew your arm off to change the channel. Unlike Emmerdale. Now, this is a dangerous place to live. 1993, a plane crash. 2000, a bush crash. 2003, a storm. 2006, a house fire. 2013, a Woolpack flooded. 2015, there was a helicopter crash. 2016, a cottage exploded. 2016, as well, this was a bad year, there was a big motorway crash. And in 2021, the Woolpack caught fire. I'll tell you, oh, the more <laughs> dangerous place to live than Emmerdale. 
or can they? Not a soap exactly, but if you were to live in midsummer, you'd probably be dead, you'd be in potentially in grave danger. Every episode, there are at least three murders, Vanessa. So every week, at least three people were bumped off and they didn't even think to up the police force. They left it to Bergerac and his oppo. The house prices must be rock bottom. But finally, we can't leave the soap scene without paying tribute to Crossroads with its wobbly walls and acting that was stiffer than Mark Cowson's product. Um, <laughs> fortunately, it was axed, but whatever happened to Benny? But seriously or not, what's the point of soap operas? That's my what's the point for later on, I'll bag that in. Uh, yeah. I think it's to make us all feel better about ourselves. They say there's always someone worse off than you, unless you live in Albert Square, Coronation Street, Emmerdale, or Midsummer something. That's Do we amazing. agree? I mean, you've already got massive thumbs up from Jim, and you've got 100% agree from uh, from loads and loads of people. Are we giving him a thumbs up or a thumbs down for this rant? So Deb's just come in and said, totally agree. Any other, any other, is there anyone soap fans out there that can give him a thumbs down? Maybe, maybe your perspective is that soaps have a place. Is he winning? Don't let him win. Don't let him win. I've, I've got, I've got, I, I haven't bought one of these for years, but I bought it especially for this episode. No expense spent. Um, <laughs> I want to know what, who, A, who Linda is and what her surprise return is. I didn't even know she was there in the first place. <laughs> So you're not you're not so interested in a surprise return. No. <laughs> no, right. Okay. Okay. I'm time happy, time. You, thank man. you for I'm, your thank, thank you for your yeah, it was very good. Uh, uh for those who missed the opening skip, Vanessa, could you just do your little pose again? Oh, hang on. I'm <laughs> just, it's the best thing ever. Screen <laughs> <laughs> That's really amazed you. Isn't it? It's absolutely tickled me. Right. Tickled. Can, now, now Vanessa, can you also then do one? This pretends is a bottle of wine for your post that you put out later on. Like that. Oh yeah, it's got to be it the bottle of like wine that. just in front of the just in front oh, of the. Uh, I'll replace the... it by the curve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, normally in this show we have a we have a little thing that we do where we play a tune, and everybody knows what to do. Um, we're changing it this week. I'm yeah. not going to tell you what to do. You'll get it yourself. I'm sure you'll get it yourself. I'm sure you'll understand. No, no, yes, I'm fine, Andrew. Andrew. Yes, I'm hang on. All right, Pete Taylor. Yeah. On the booze. On the booze, there we go. All right, T. Taylor Hawkins, we, yeah. we, we donated on the booze to Mon the Foods this week as a tribute. Yeah. Terrible loss. Really sad loss. Very sad. Mon the Foods. I'm banging too. Brilliant. Tunes. Absolutely brilliant. Hey, we asked uh, we asked someone if they wanted to come on, and uh, Chris Wallace, um, Chris Wallace from McCartney, friend of the show, uh, Boratonian mug owner, and I think maybe prize winner. I'm not absolutely sure. Yeah. Uh, type get. Shall we? Shall we see what he wants to talk about? Yeah. Why not? Get him on. He's already in the green room. I can see him. Is he? Chris, when you come on, you've got two minutes uninterrupted time to tell us exactly what you're all about. It's Chris Wallace, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you well? Are you well? I am not. I currently have the COVID again. Oh, How can you have the COVID again? Well, that's what happens when you do uh, four conferences in three weeks all yeah. across the UK. So uh, <laughs> it caught up with me at last, unfortunately. So yeah, dragged myself from my deathbed to be here today just for you guys. Well, good on you for doing it. Uh, you have two uh, two minutes uninterrupted or or collaborative time to tell us something. That you would like us to do or just give us some information what what have you got to tell us today so a bit of a double plug here um oh. today so first of all um for those of you who do follow me on linkedin know that i am uh engaged with a 
uh, amateur musical theatre company called AOC Productions, and we are performing Calendar Girls the Musical at the Center, uh, 1st to 4th of June. Tickets are on sale at www.aocproductions.co.uk. Um, check that out. <laughs> but part of part of what we're doing this year because of the theme of calendar girls is um we've partnered with friends of anchor um in aberdeen for those of you who don't know friends of anchor is a um cancer charity um helping those uh, dealing with cancer recovering from cancer um based in aberdeen so we've we've taken part in their going the distance campaign um throughout the month of march there was about 15 of us um, set a target to walk 1,940 miles. There is a reason behind that number. It's actually the year the company was founded. Wow. Uh, that to say that we smashed that target. We're over 2,000 miles already um, as of Sunday. Um, we're still going on. However, we're a wee bit behind in our money target um, for raising money. So if any fellow Bonatonians out there would like to pop in a tenner, five or whatever you can spare, um, there's a Just Giving link on one of my posts. I'll pop it into the chat as well. Pop it into the chat, yes, that's yeah. the thing to do. Uh, if you can go in there, drop us a little bit of money to help towards the uh, the, the charity, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, the, this money in particular has been ring-fenced for the Anchored Together appeal, uh, which is looking at um, new uh, stuff for the new facility that they've built up at uh, ARI here in Aberdeen, um, new equipment um, to help with uh, oncology and hematology uh, day and outpatients. So, Every penny would be gratefully received. Brilliant. Flip, it, flipping good cause. And I'm oh, guessing yeah. you're going to use I've Got COVID as an excuse for I've been asking you to come on and sing in this show for about a year, but you've got COVID, right? So you can't yes, sing. Yes, exactly. Ah, I'll, right. I'll be back. I'll be back, Eric. Yeah, yes, ab definitely. absolutely. Absolutely. So stick the link in. Thank you so much for being our Get Me On today. It's been a pleasure okay. to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Stay well, Chris. Yeah. Stay Cheers. Wait till I'm going um, ah, quite right too. Ta ta. Bye bye. Yes. Bye, lovely. Wasn't oh, that cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. Martin Belch has got snow. Martin Belch has got snow. We've got a bit of snow in Kemney. Yeah, all right. We've got some here. Anyone recognise this show? Any, anyone a big fan? Big show. Neighbours? No. Neighbours. <laughs> Master Chef. Anybody out there? Some of you requested it. Big show. Killing Eve. Of course. Now, I've got issues with Killing Eve because the first series blew me away. Yeah. Yes. And then I think it's all sort of become a little bit of a pastiche of itself. And I've, yeah. I've, I've it's, sort of it's... pitched it. Uh, yeah, we, we've done the same. I'm the same. I'm the same. I think I think it's dragging on it's way, too, way too. Two series done. Kill Gosh. It, kill yeah. it. And and, and leave <laughs> it in the brilliance that it was rather than just stretching it out and milking it. This was it. this was demanded. This Mom. was demanded. Demanded. John Bloomfield got a bit excited. Um, I think it was a big show. No, um, Remember I used to make, make them out of Lego. Like <laughs> um, remember I said uh, remember I said the Boritonians were quite uh, quite cool in the way that they approach some of this. Um, you get the link here. You get it. That's quite smart. Very smart. We didn't come up with that, did we? <laughs> no, uh, I think it was Stuart White. Yeah. So we can go for a, a classy, classy bit of Britpop to um, to this. Let's go through the cast. I think LinkedIn Twitter is John Bloomfield, and he's saying, it's JB, it's my birthday today. Happy it's birthday, birthday, John. Yeah, absolutely. So that was for you. Okay. I'm coming out to all the musos here, right? I'm coming out to all the musos. Does anyone see where I'm going with this track before we move to the next feature? Does anyone see where I'm going with this? I'm trying to appeal to the, 
the deep dark mesos here. My work is complete. If someone types in the name of this band, I don't think it's going to happen. Terrific band. Give it a couple of seconds. You might be on your own here, Eric. I yeah. think I'm on my own. I think that is the wonderful TV on the radio. See what I've done there? No? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah see, so we did. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. TV oh, on the radio, Terry Lawson. Oh, Terry. You Maybe just, yeah, yeah. Eric. just as you said it. Can hardly hear it. Um, we know stick with us. Is a typey thing. Yeah, stick with us for the grand prize. We're hurtling towards the end of the show. Stick with us for the grand prize. £100 Amazon voucher. Not Frightened Rabbit. It was TV on the radio. Uh, halfway home. Um, stick with us. And uh, Alistair Dickinson is actually joining us live on the show for the grand prize giveaway. So stick with us. But in the meantime, it's time to go to our resident fact master, fact toy, fact toy Dorian. It's, uh, it's Simon Wells. Morning, all. Mm. I think Morning. you've just invented a brand new word there, Eric. Fact toy Dorian. Fact toy Dorian. But quite, we like it. I think you should really use it. <laughs> if anyone can use the word fact toy Dorian in a post today and tag me in it. <laughs> Yes, yes. Not in three hey, years time. Fa Go for it. Fa Factoidonian. Factoidonian. Exactly. Exactly. How would, what you spell, you have for how would you spell that, Eric? F A C T O I D I A N. No. 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 Factoid. Factoid O N I A N. I missed an O N. Factoidonian. Brilliant. So there we go. Great start. Go. What a there what go. a good yeah, show today, on. eh? <laughs> What yeah, a good show. Sure. This is it, the, the grad. We've had all of this stuff. We've had the charity bit. It's it's a really sort of socially engaging one today. I'm loving it. It's going really well. Yeah. Do you uh do you have a do you have a jingle, perhaps? Well, possibly. Oh. <laughs> I had a bit of a bit of a tech meltdown earlier on, so if it doesn't happen, you, you can all sing along, surely. Fact of the day. No. Beautiful. <laughs> one, two, three. Fact of the day. Ping. It there worked, by the way. It did work. It did, it work. did it. Yeah. 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 I didn't hear it at my end. <gasps> Go for it, Simon. Fa odd. Fa factors anyway, up. Boring. So, um, TV, TV theme tunes we've been talking about today. So I decided to look up the origin of TV theme tunes. And um, essentially, they, they were originally commercials. So back in the day, we're talking sort of the really early days of TV, each individual show would have its own sponsor that sort of paid for everything that needs to go into a show. Um, and these, these sponsors were specific to each show. So you would have a show that was just sponsored by a brand of tyre. You had a show that was just sponsored by a brand of soap, which incidentally, Matt, is the soap part of soap operas. That's why you get the soap. Oh, very good. Um, I feel enlightened. A little, little throw in there. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, sort of every show would start and end with uh, a little commercial for their sponsor sponsor often including a jingle and after a while those jingles just became so associated with the show that they sponsored that was that was sort of became their theme you know everyone knew oh yeah that's the whatever company it is show um and then after a little while when this trend sort of died down they they didn't didn't have sponsors per show but people had so got into that habit they actually started writing theme tunes to go with the show as an introduction like a hook you know as soon as you hear we've seen it this morning as soon as you hear that tune you all go oh it's time for the howdy doody show whatever it might be you know isn't it yeah i wasn't there at the time um now there was um there was a poll carried out in america of the nation's top five favorite theme tunes from 1950 to 2000 and i was quite quite interested to sort of see what what was up there so the, the top favourite was Cheers. Yeah, I can get obviously. that. Followed by Friends. Yes. Followed by MASH. Followed by Mission Impossible. And the Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't even tell you how two of those theme tunes go. But apparently those are the... the... Thank you for being a friend. Was oh, Golden Girls. Oh, very good, yeah. <laughs> MASH was Suicide is Painless. It was a very popular tune. Suicide is painless. Dallas. Dallas. And I mean, I know that they were. Yeah, Dallas and Dynasty. Yeah, they should have been up there, shouldn't they? Surely. Right. Dallas. Wow. Um, and then 
I think it's probably, we've already played a little snip of it earlier on, but does anyone know what the UK's official favourite TV theme of all time is? Coronation Street. No. No. Inspector Morse. Oh! We, we, we yeah, played a little bit of that. Will exactly, yeah. Uh, that is officially the UK's favourite wow. theme tune for a TV show of all time. And um, most people already know this, but if you don't, that theme tune, and when it starts off with those little beep, 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 beep that sort of runs all the way through. You're not going to say that's Morse code. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to tell us that that's Morse code? Oh, it's Morse code. Do you know what the word is that's, that that bit of Morse code spells? No. Morse. Oh, this is fact overload. This is awful. Just, it's a drop the mic Morse. It's a drop the mic Morse factoidonia yeah. moment. It is, isn't it? <laughs> If you can fit all of that sentence into a post, you get two mugs. <laughs> you get more to you get three. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So just put your entire in, entire oh, post in dot, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash. <laughs> so there you go. There's my little facts for the day. Smash hey. that, Simon. They were brilliant. Yeah, you absolutely, absolutely nailed that. We will we will send you off to a, a song, a, a track that you mentioned. Go on. Uh, You mentioned it. You mentioned uh, you mentioned the Dallas. Yeah, the Dallas. Right, we're going to crack on because we have had uh, far too much of a great time. See you soon, Simon. Thank you for your facts today. Bye. Ta-ta. We're going to crash straight on into a round to it with Susan Brown. How are you, Susan? Hey, morning. Bonjour, ça va? Bonjour, ça va bien. Uh, comme si, comme ça. Yeah. Yeah. Mange two, mange two. <laughs> mange two, mange two. <laughs> There's another thing, please. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, um, Susan is a linguist specialist in all things language, if you've never been on the show before, and advises us on linguistic things related to our themes. And uh, <laughs> and she'll maybe drop a word in or two that if you put in a post, we will send one of these lovely uncommon mugs through the post to you. Um, so what do you have for us today, Susan? Such an uncommon mug. We Such an uncommon them. mug. I've promised a few tips on foreign language drama. No drama rama here, just drama. No drama rama. So I'm going to give you my tips, and I'm going to start with um, a guy called Walter Luzolino, who was what? born in 1968. This is a fine vintage, ask Andy Griffiths. Um, he's an Italian TV producer, and he has a series on Channel 4 where he recommends non-English speaking dramas. So you can discover some real pearls. There's also a lot of dog poop on there as well. Right. Uh, you know, I've seen a couple, you have to you have to bin it off <laughs> if it's not working. The ones I have watched and would recommend from what is Walter Presents on Channel 4. Now I'd recommend this one called The Chestnut Man. Okay. Oh. It's Danish. Tiba would agree with that. There's two series of it, I think, is a crime drama, tremendous. A Norwegian one, All the Sins. Yeah. Um, pop, pop and have a look what takes your fancy on there. Andrew F. Bennett, who I think has popped in from, I have no idea where he's in the world right now. He should be in the US, so. Let us know, Andrew F. Bennett. He told me about Call My Agent, which is the French, the French's Dispel song. Now it has, it's a, apparently a, a little bit like Entourage. Is that a US one? Yes, and, it is, yeah. So the real stars play themselves, but you get some hilarious, it's just such a warm, easy to watch comedy. Uh, that's subtitled, Call My Agent. I'm sure I found that on Netflix or the I, streaming site. I haven't watched it, Susan, but I have heard about that and it's especially oh, you very, very better. Better. It's just lovely. It's a yeah. it, the characters are, are terrific. It, another French one from Andrew again, which I binged seven series of Spiral, a Parisian cop drama, um, originally called Enconnage. Have a look at that. We all know the Deutschland 83, 86. I need to go back to those. Um, a Sp Spanish money heist. Mm, I'm here and there with that. I don't know if it's the dubbing. I can't. I don't know about anybody else. And Squid Game, if you've not seen it. Tough. Wonderful. Of course. So I think I'm, I'm, those are my favourite ones. Before I say our videos in Pets. Ow! Oh, oh, well. <laughs> <Ow. laughs> 
it's English last time I looked, but there you yeah. go. Um, give a mug a home. You can have a mug. We see some brilliant posts from uh, the Buritonians with this. If you're new, listen, it's, it's a real mug. It's, it's very good. Eric will post it out to you. Uh, you don't have to pay for the postage. I don't know what's not to Exactly. Like. I'm, we're spending a fortune, but it's worth it. Almost, worth almost it. as much as you can spend on beer. Have you, got a, have you got a particular word or phrase you'd like the Buritonians to? I do. To? I'm thinking, why don't you try and get the word drama in there? Get the word drama in a post. Yeah. Make it subtle. Make it as unsubtle as I am. Just yes. get the word drama in a post. Tag me so that I know you've done it and you get your mug. Tag, tag, the, tag at, at the Big Live Breakfast Burrito yes. and we will send some muggage out in the post. Susan, it's always a pleasure. We will catch you later. Alvida Sen. Alvida Sen. Ta -ta. Ta -ta. Ta -ta. Oh, Wasn't that cool? Wasn't that yeah, cool? Um, just really, really quickly, Boritonian updates. Um, you know, we've got, I mean, these two are supposed to anyway, but uh, yeah, I'm glad you got what your you? mug and it was well non chuffed, non chuffed. Um, you're supposed to anyway, but uh, Matt Pybus. <sighs> To burrito or not to burrito, that is the question. Whether it is noble in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of his outrageous quesadillas or to take arms against the sea of guacamole at 07 40, 45 on a Thursdays, if you know, you know. That's outstanding. That's his LinkedIn headline. Creating safe spaces to enable individuals and teams to learn, grow and develop, says Will Shorten, when not doing all the cycling, reciting of poetry as the bard of Boratonia. Oh, Will. I mean, come on. Wow. Brilliant. I have been I have been challenged recently as to why I'm the only one that doesn't have it, but I will be fixing that shortly. I'm just waiting it's for the right someone time. else to write your headline. You've got to wait for someone else to write it for you. Totally, exactly. Right, we're coming to the right. Go, Vanessa. Yeah, right. do it. Yeah, <laughs> God. God. <laughs> it amuses us. It's Doyle's doubles time. So every week, as you all know now, Matt and I challenge Eric to do an impression of someone very well known. He's been, <laughs> he's been rehearsing hard this week. It's a good one, Matt, isn't it? So mm -hmm. um, we ask you wonderful Baratonians to pop in the comments who you think he is doing. So, Eric? Yeah, I'm really nervous. And keep in mind, and I don't think by any means that I'm a good impersonator. I just get challenged for this every week. Okay. So here we go. I'm just going to dive in, right? It's dreadful. Um, it's good. Right. You're putting the wig on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could put the wig on. Yeah, put the wig on. but you can't do the impression without the wig. <clears throat> Stay, with us. Stay with us for the grand prize draw. Yeah, it's coming. Well, Hector, here's the game plan. You're going to bring us two absolute martinis. You know how I like them, straight up. And then precisely seven and one half minutes after that, you're going to bring us two more. Then two more every five minutes after that until one of us passes out. All right, all right, all right. One thing you got to remember when you're doing this guy is you never touch your teeth. You never touch your teeth together. And that's a fact. You can take that to the bank for sure. Um, three, three, three in a week, you got to pump those numbers up. Them's rookie numbers. And then just now repeat after me. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. And he's going to keep oh, going until someone gets it. Was... <laughs> oh, he's got it. Terry's got it. Yes! Standing. Benny from Crossroads. That's what I was going for. <laughs> well done, Darren. Matthew, <laughs> Matthew McConaughey with a question mark? Like one question mark? <laughs> Better ones, I think, this week. Do you reckon? Good one. Yeah. You just got to keep your teeth open so when you say things like, for sure, for sure, for sure. you get a shh, a shh. For sure. Absolutely. Right, enough of this malarkey. Malarkey <laughs> it is. Malarkey. Um, let's crack on. It's time for the grand prize draw. We're a little bit late, but we'll get there. I'm sure no one's going to fright with this. Anyone in this chat could win £100, courtesy of, and let's just, let's just get them on, we get a little bit of a tune for him coming on. Let yeah. me see what would be fitting for this guy. I'm just going to go with this. Maybe he's watched the show. Maybe he hasn't. Someone mentioned it earlier on. Entourage. It is the one and only our sponsor for the week. It's Alistair Dickinson. Morning. Alistair. Morning. How are you doing? <laughs> are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. What an, what an amazing show. Thank you so much. Thank you so That's much. Been... Phenomenal. We've we've uh, we've progressed a little bit since you were our first ever guest back in yeah, the day when it was just you, Matt and I just rambling. I, I just I just want to say, Eric, <laughs> there was three of us with, rambling. With, yeah, <laughs> with that wig on, you kind of look like one of the goodies, but I'm not gonna. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Tim Brooke Taylor or something like that. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Listen, it's been such an honour. You've sure. been our sponsor for the last two weeks. You've been very gracious. You. Um, you always said that when you got out version four of Maximise, you right. would come on as a sponsor, and you've got version four out. Has it been? Has it been an easy road? No, no, not no. at all. No, no. No, anybody who knows about kind of building software, and I'm not going to bore you with it, but you kind of do these re- release candidates to get to a to get to a kind of foundation point. And we're there, yeah. We got to uh, RC four, release candidate four. So that is that is version four. So we're we're now building the verticals and everything works. So that's all I'm going to say about it. It's uh, those are the link in the YouTube, uh, a link in the comments to the YouTube. So quite right, uh, quite right. Yeah, we'll get people to check it out. But normally, what we do is we'll run a little skit. So um, uh, Vanessa, Maximize are our main sponsors for the day today. And is that? Just quickly, Eric, is that the Maximize that is the easy to use mapping solution for all your data needs to understand your sales, marketing and operations data on a map view with Maximize.com, supporting Microsoft Dynamics 365, Sugar CRM and Salesforce with live data connectors so you can access your data in real time on a map helping you build editable data tables, pin variation, along with filtering data views to help you analyse what you need to see and where you need to see it. That's right, Alistair, isn't it? Something like that, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's that's the interview over, Vanessa. So um, you can start on Monday. That's fine. Oh, yeah, Monday. Monday. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna run our competition right now. Um, cool. So for those for you guys out there, you can see the spelling of Maximize behind uh, Alistair. Yeah. Type that in just now, Maximize, and then we're looking for um, the name of the artist that's playing, <laughs> the name of the song, and the name of the the TV show that this is associated with. Now. The picky ones out there who know their stuff will say, "Well, that's not the artist that sung it on the show," but you'll know what we mean. Yes. Who is this? Who is this artist? What is the track? And who is the show? And stick Maximize in first. And given the fact that it's version four, Alistair, I propose that we go for the fourth correct answer. Sounds, Sounds like good. perfect. Do, do yeah. you like what I've done there? Yeah, yeah. 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 Right just... here we here we go. Oh, da da. What? No, what I was going to say, is it, is is it Dora the Explorer? I'm a map. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's, well, that's, that's a competition. Have to go with something no, else. No, no it's, it's definitely not. Maximize, name of the song, name of the artist, name of the show it's associated with, please. Fourth correct answer wins £100. Come see if this man here. Trying to make a thousand signs. Ever see young girl growing old? Trying to make herself a bride. It will come. It always takes a few minutes yeah. to be back time. There's quite a lot of hype, actually, to be fair. <laughs> Leave it going the whole song. We're just waiting for John and Susan to finish their chat about the snow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maximize stereophonics, I'm stuck, says Beth. Oh. <laughs> so, the first correct answer, I'm going a bit fast. first correct answer is, uh, it's actually, it's not Manic Street Creatures. Maximize, Rod Stewart, no. Handbags like that. The first correct answer is Ross Jolly. Right. Then we'll say, we'll say Jay Smith is second. Yeah. Scott, Scott. Scott, Scott is third, and he's got it right. So if anyone wants to copy Scott Petrie's answer and find it, and you'll be the winner. They are dead from Stratford. Yes, from Stratford. And actually, and actually, it's not Ross Stewart. You're absolutely right. It's uh, it's stereophonics. Is it Debbie Radford? Yes. Debbie yes. Radford from Stratford. You agree to that? Maximize. Stereophonics, hand likes and glad rags, the office. It's Debbie Radford. Well done. Big congratulations. Hey, awesome. she's going down the Terry Lawson route of winning everything. Absolutely. I think, she's, I think she's Debbie great. won she's the course. Absolutely good. 
Well done to Debbie, and thank you so much to you, sir. Um, uh, yes. You've been very generous to the show for a sponsor, and you've been a friend of the show since the start. So you were our very first mystery guest on our very first ever show. I was, and and I was, I was, yeah, I, I, and that was when all the technology broke, if you remember. Yeah. That's right, and it does regularly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and could break, could break now. Yes. Um, thank you so be, much, sir. Carry we'll on. We'll be back for more. Um, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. Um, for now, um, thank you for joining us, and uh, and we'll see you again. Yeah, thank you. Connection for us. Bye bye. bye. Thank you, Alistair. Later. Later. Hey, we reached the end of the show. Have we? Yeah, yeah we have. I'd like to thank uh, Daniel and uh, Chris for coming on, yeah. and for all those out there, let's see if we can get behind the power of this young grad. See if Brilliant. we can do something special. Wouldn't it be great if we had such a good news story to bring someone on who's maybe spoken to him or dare I say it, hired him. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks to uh, Will, Susan and Simon for being here. Craig uh, just wanted a couple of weeks just to get himself sorted out. Craig will be back. Don't worry about that. Craig's uh, position is secure. He's yeah. just, um, he's got some stuff he needs to be dealing with right now. Yes. Absolutely. And we'll see him again. Thanks to the OGV Taproom. Thanks to Alistair at Mapsimize. And thank you to you guys for tuning in every week. Uh, you make our day with the support. Um, we're going to leave you with a thumping TV show with a brilliant theme tune. Um, if you're not watching this, tune in. It's absolutely wonderful. And we'll see you again next week. Ta ta, everyone. Bye bye. Cheer, everyone. We're gonna, now it's the awkward bit where we, we bring everyone on. Just to wave. Just to wave. Yeah. Bring everyone yeah, on that's still in, still in the green room. Just to wave. We'll bring Daniel on as well because he's still here. <laughs> Anyone recognize this? No. Nope. Hans Ian Zimmer, Blue Planet. Oh. Beautiful. Yeah, let's get those. Let's, let's get those cups up. <laughs> Alistair looked at the desk there for a second. <laughs> it's Costa Coffee. Is he, is he still waiting for a mug? <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. Mug and the. Brilliant. See you guys. Have a lovely Thursday. Bye bye. Bye bye.